Okay, we're now in the second section. Where was I? Um, my computer doesn't really have much space to record everything I record goes on there. All right, I was at uh, about my college years, and uh, my teacher, yeah, she was teased when she was a kid because her last name is Fuji. Yeah, Fuji san. Another way of saying mountain in Japanese is you can say it san, san, or you can say it as yama. So instead of say, putting sa and un at the end of uh, Fuji, yeah, her name is Fuji, uh, kanji, they would put is mountain. <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't really a bad teasing, you know, like, you know, it was kind of play on words, you know, things like that. I mean, that's a lot within the Asian culture, especially within Japanese. They like, uh, you know, puns and because their culture is based off of, you know, sound alikes or, you know, the same pronunciation, but it's actually a different word when you write, write it out. So, yeah. You'll see that in a lot of animations, and especially if you watch is... Uh, Oh, uh, Excel Saga. Well, look in the construction scene of Excel Saga where it has was the warning. Well, if you do is try to translate literally of what it says, it won't make sense. But if you go to the pronunciation of the characters, each of the characters, and also, you know, it will make sense. It'll actually be quite funny and interesting at the same time. Uh, or you can just get the DVD and actually go and see if your version of the DVD that does have is the little Easter egg, you know, the pop-up of Menchie's head will translate it for you. He'll tell you what it actually says. And, you know, information about it. That's if you have that version of the of Excel Saga. Um... So when Toonami came out, that was pretty interesting. I didn't get to see a lot of Toonami when it first ran because I was too busy doing work of my school work at, late at night if I had any. Usually I did it while I was in school and in class. I did, did everything. Um, and I was usually too tired to do, watch TV or do anything. So, yeah. A lot of times I had to walk several hours just to get to my house from the college to my home. It's quite a walk back and forth. I didn't have a car and I was too tired to even drive if I had a vehicle. So, all right. It's like I said before, my Japanese course, she taught us uh, how, it, you know, in three months, to be proficient by the end of the end of the course, so from we were starting off in uh, in uh, kindergarten level and ending it in first year of uh, university level Japanese. She taught it as if we're in Japan, we speak Japanese. And, yeah, going through the whole thing. Yeah, and this was an introductory course, by the way. Introductory. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of times she realized that we had to do was each of us had to go at our own pace. I was actually excelling faster than all of them. The Asian kids were slower, and I knew what the Chinese kids were doing. They were translating it. I don't know if I said it in these new videos, but I said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, in the, uh, the Chinese, I knew... Chinese and other peoples that came from China, from uh, Taiwan and stuff, they would do is translate. They, in their mind, they understand their language and then they translate it into English. And then when they heard the English, then they had to translate it back into their language to understand. It was kind of a bizarre thing of doing. I always thought, why don't you just flip your mind to thinking a certain way? But some people don't. That's what they did. And I've 
grew up and seeing people do that. They were like literally translating in their head. So it makes sense for them and vice versa. The Chinese kids, they were having like the character for horse, which is pronounced in Chinese, or at least how I learned it was ma. And they would translate into English the word, which would be horse. And then they would have to translate it into Japanese. And I thought, well, you already know the kanji for horse. So instead of skipping the step, all that translating, all you have to do is, you know how to say it one way in Chinese. Now, just say it a different way. That's it. You know what the character is. You don't have to relearn how to draw the character. Even my teacher, she was upset about this. So the Chinese kids, like, it's your written language. You know this shit. Why are you taking so long? The white kids are better than you. They're actually faster. And they're not, their language isn't tonal based. <laughs> Mine, on the other hand, I spoke Hawaiian, German, because yeah, Celtic, and, you know, bits and pieces of Celtic. I didn't realize it until like, when I was in grade school. I was like, well, actually about four, three or four years old. Before grade school, my dad taught me about where English came from, what it was derived from, you know, and saying that, told me the easiest language to learn from English is German. It really is. And when I did take German, it was really easy. And I, I, I actually still speak German when I can. But a lot of times, like with most of the languages I've learned, I usually don't speak to a lot of people in those languages. Not unless I'm pissed off or whatever, I'll just start speaking another language. I might, I'll just flip into it. You know, like one of the Romance languages, like a lot of times I go from Latin to French to Italian. You know, mash the different languages together. <laughs> go around. Sometimes I speak Russian. You now just some words here and there. Not proficient. Uh, well, I still want to go to Japan and just be an artist and live there for a few years. Now, the easiest way of learning the language, well, for me, I had to do was what Fuji Junko wanted me to do. She wanted me to to go through it and learn it. And plus, like I probably said before, uh, we were taught in that particular way from kindergarten level all the way to first year college level or university level actually and first you know it was a five days a week you know for like about i think it was four hours maybe it was five i'm not really remembering but i'm thinking as low as three but high would be like five hours at the most <laughs> I think it was actually more like three to four hours actually around there, but it was five days a week, Monday through Friday. I remember that. And we had to also do was lab work, go to language lab, but I never had time for the language lab because all my classes were really close together in their time slots. So I didn't really have that much time. So what I would do is drop off cassettes. My teacher understood. I didn't really have time for the language labs because when I did have time they were already closed you know it's like when I do have time that's my lunch period it's closed it's like <laughs> it has actual hours like of when it's open and closed so I do is drop off my stuff and before class and then after class I pick it up and I had the textbooks and my teacher she said you don't have to fill out the textbooks but you know we had was textbooks we also I've lost what that was the workbook she said do that on your own she gave me uh, these um, monthly mangas that were meant for like grade school kids different levels and she noticed that I like drawing and she would tell me that you know animation is really big in Japan I go yeah I understand and she was like telling me also comic books are like everywhere. There's every freaking variety. So she started introduced me to a lot of Japanese stuff. Some of it I already knew, I already had was um, these magazines from Japan, which I ended up learning how to 
what it says and these were game magazines which also described on was uh, the new cartoon series which also came became in video games and all this which was kind of interesting and hoping some of these things would get to America Dang. <laughs> but they're really kind of cool um, so I was always interested all right with Toonami uh, when it came out, I was still going to college, and I never really had time to watch it. But a lot of times I did watch a lot of anime through friends that I met online. That actually, I knew people in Japan, only through online chats and stuff. And some of these people actually had was servers. And what they would do is film from their TV. You know, literally make freaking copies onto their computer and put it online. I would, you know, of series and whatever. I used to get my anime that way. And also, some people did the same thing in the States with Toonami. This was back in the day. Okay, I'm talking about from the 90s, all right? Like, 97 is when Toonami came out. So, thinking around 97 to 99, because that's when I was going through college when Toonami was on the air, I saw a lot of Toonami through the internet, you know, some people would show, like, did was, like, uh, combining just the animation sequences of, especially this, of when they had was, uh, was Tom, when Tom came onto the series, you know, he was the new host, which is, uh, uh, Steve Bloom. One of my favorite voice actors that that are around today. Reason I like him because not just because he does Tom from Toonami, but he also does is another character that everyone knows, Spike. You know from Cowboy Bebop. It's he's freaking Spike, man. Oh, yeah. And other, uh, I've heard that from interviews, I'll put in the doobly doop on interviews that, you know, things that he's actually said about Toonami and his career early on with, and so it's some of the hate mail, you know, or even people crediting him as destroying the art. He wasn't destroying the art. Steve Bloom and other voice actors, also like Hilary Haig, most people say hag, but it's actually hag. H double A G. Hag. It's an A sound. Hag. She's actually really short. I've seen videos of her, you know, and also I wanted to get her autograph. Right, one time she was actually supposed to be at the MA Expo, but she was in the studio at the time, so she could. Stone I actually want to get her signature. She, they, well, I was really a fan of her work. I like her voice acting. And there's other actor voice actors that I, that I really liked. You know, all the way back to the voice actors that did He Man, She Ra, and did GI Joe. I knew, I know uh, this one animator that he works for Disney. When back in the day, in the early '80s, he did. G.I. Joe, My Little Pony. Uh, he was also on a few other shows. I think he was on He-Man and She-Ra as well. But his name is Wendell. He looks like the character that... His, the character's name was Wendell as well, by the way. He looks like it. Well, if you've seen was the... Simon Toast Crunch, when they had was that little chef. You know, the portly chef that was on there. That character's name is Wendell. And the animator that I know looks like that. He's actually a great guy. I will do a video about discussing what uh, when I uh, basically kind of interviewed him more or less when I went to Disney Studios in California, in Studio City actually. I, I really wanted to work there, but when I found out of Disney's policies and other animation companies' policies, I really did not want to do that. I want, you know, to work for those companies. I wanted to do was create my own company and do my own art and actually create my own series and whatever. I also want to do comics and stuff, which actually I do comic books and 
that's kind of like where I'm going with the Japanese. Uh, I wanted to do that because like with my comic books, I, when I learned Japanese, I wanted to do was like my graphic novels, print them in English for America, but go to Japan and have it tra- uh, translate it into Japanese, and I'll actually hire somebody to do is correct it to see if it's all correct that makes sense in Japanese, and then it will go into print for the Japanese market, which will be small runs, and I would sell it, well, in two ways. One is online, well, at the time in college, like in the 90s, almost nobody was doing shit like that, I was thinking about that, I was also thinking about things of sites where you would conglomerate to have all your different videos which became YouTube I thought of things like this and at the time the bandwidth was way too big and uh, way too small but to do that was too you know, hard you know you had to have a really good computer luckily when I was in college we had some really badass computers for the time to me they still look very primitive even then and now <laughs> I have high expectations of technology. All right. So that's kind of where it is. And uh, the easy way of learning, um, we'll go through that in part three. This is part two of it.